Hello Coder, so we finally finished up the Dynamic UI tutorial series and hopefully by now you guys have a fully functional system ready to go, ready for you guys to start creating your own custom menus. But in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how you guys can set up your own custom page transitions um, based on what we scripted already in the previous tutorials. Okay, so what we're going to be looking towards achieving is something where we have our, our menu buttons on our screen and we're able to just click to go to each one of the screens. So here we have the lower, uh, and then we can go to settings, we can go to achievements, and we can even go into some of these subcategories here um, for arcade mode or stuff like that. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be showing you guys how you can set up. Uh, and what we're going to do is set up the functionality for this story button right here. And we're going to create a new page, um, add the transition script to it, set the settings for that, and then add some uh, and then add some prefabs to our menu controller. Okay, so let's start off by creating a page. What we're going to do is right click on our menu since that is the canvas. We're going to create a new UI and we're going to say this is going to be an image and this is a very important part of this process we need to if this is going to be our background image we need to set this to stretch All right. <clears throat> now if you don't want your um, if you don't want your background image to stretch and you want to preserve aspect you can check this checkbox right here alright but we want to make sure that we have this stretch so that our anchors are um, out here in the corners okay so as long as our anchors are out here in the corners we're good I'm going to go ahead and rename this to story so this is going to be our story page and I'm going to change the color so that it matches our other pages alright so we have that now what I want to add is a page title so I'm going to go add a page title it's going to be a text I'm going to have that up here um, in this region of the screen alright and then I'm going to change my font so it matches the other pages. I'm going to call this story and I'm going to set best fit. Now the color for this is going to be uh, really really light gray and I'm going to increase my max size to a hundred. Alright, then I'm going to bring this back here and I want to change the anchoring of my text component so that it always stays up in this uh, top right region. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click this on the rect transform component and I'm going to hold shift and uh, press this top right corner button. Now I don't need my origin to be at the top right so I can move this back to the middle. But you can see that my anchors moved up here to the top right. Um, now an important thing to note is if I run this, okay so let's go ahead and uh, well I'll show you when we get there so I'm gonna leave it as it is <clears throat> let's go ahead and add a back button to our page okay so to add a back button we're gonna come here we're gonna say new button alright now our button is going to have the same sprite as our other pages just gonna be this one I'm gonna drag it up to where I want it and again I want my back button to remain in the top left region of the screen so I'm gonna come here I'm gonna hold shift and select that uh, top left anchor right there so you can see that it's anchored up there in the top left no matter what and the reason we're doing this is because no matter what screen resolution we're using we want the button to be up in the uh, up in that region of the screen okay and I'm going to um, add some text to this so this is going to be back it's going to say back this is our back button I'm going to go ahead and rename it naming um, naming your objects in your hierarchy is a very important part of this process. I'm gonna go ahead and give it give it a nice font and a nice color so that it can be visible. That looks good to me. Okay, so we have our back button. Now, what we need to do is add a dynamic listener to this button. Okay, so. I'm going to add a uh, listener to this. It's going to be, well, we can just type in dynamic listener. Select that. And the object listening is going to be menu. So this is the, t the tag that we're going to be listening to. Um, we're going to be listening to the menu controller. If you remember, it has the menu tag. Okay, so we're listening to this one. It does take a parameter. And the send message is going to be set next page. And the page that we want to go back to is main. Okay, so if we look at our menu, 
you can see that we have this main page is going to be the front page and the page code right here is main so that is the message parameter that I want to pass to that okay so we have our story page prefab set I can go ahead and drag this into my pages prefab alright there we go and then I'm going to come to my menu controller and I'm going to add an element to this so I'm going to go from 8 to 9 I'm going to drag my story prefab into this so remember that's my story page I'm going to add a an element to my page codes and this is this is going to be called story okay so we have our menu controller set up now uh, now what I need to do is find my story button okay so I have my my buttons down here and let's see here's my story button so what I need to do is add a dynamic listener to this okay and again it's going to be the same menu and it's going to be taking a parameter set next page and now the page that I want to set when I click the story button is going to be story okay so let's go ahead and delete this since we made it a prefab let's run and see if we can reach that page okay so I did forget one thing and it's very important so our story page if we go to our pages prefab um, our story page needs to have a transition component on it so let's go to transition and so there what you saw was what would happen if you didn't have a transition uh, component attached to your page so I added a transition component I'm gonna leave these to be fade so my out and my in are gonna be fade uh, my parent tag is gonna be menu that is what I'm gonna be setting this page to be child of and um, my spawn position that's gonna be left to zero 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 and I'll change my fade speed to five so it's a little bit quicker alright let's go ahead and run this now and we should see that page coming into the screen okay so there it is that's our story page now watch what happens if I change the resolution now since this is a um, since story is a small sort of text it's not really doing what I wanted to show I'm gonna make that text a little bit larger let me go ahead and take the pages the story page up here I'm gonna make this text um, something longer let's change it to um, let's change the text to something like multiplayer okay so if it's something larger like this and then I save this okay now let's run the game and let's see if I can show you guys what I wanted to show you so if we go to story we can see it's multiplayer now if I change the screen resolution okay so you can see how the M backs up onto the button and this isn't the sort of behavior that we would want normally uh, we want to keep our our text or our page title a little bit more to the right okay so let me show you how we can fix that so again uh, you can see the difference here if I'm going from 16.9 to 5.4 you can see how the title kind of pushes back onto the button so what we can do is uh, a little trick with the anchors to uh, alleviate that problem what I'm gonna do is look at my uh, text here and I'm gonna change the anchors to bring them uh, bring the left side anchors only up to the um, <clears throat> the left side the leftmost side of the text and so what that's doing is it's going to say um, anything the the gap between the left side of the screen and these anchors is going to try to be maintained okay so if I save this prefab and then I delete it let's go ahead and run again so we can go back to that page okay so here we are on 16.9 if I go to 5.4 okay so now you can see how that space has been maintained between the button and the text alright so I wanted to show you guys that um, that's what I've been doing with all of my other titles so I'm gonna go ahead and change the I'm gonna bring the story prefab back up the pages for that I'm gonna bring it back up here and I'm going to change the um, text back to story alright I'm gonna bring this back over here I'm gonna bring the uh, left side anchors right up to the left most, most region of the text okay so that is going to finally conclude this series um, if you guys have any questions or any 
um, any suggestions on how you or, or any suggestions on things you would rather see in this series, things that I didn't cover that you wanted to learn about, go ahead and leave those comments in the comment section below. And if you like the series, go ahead and drop a like on this video. Um, but we are going to start picking up with some more project series coming up over the summer. I'm going to start doing some character controller series, so look out for those. But as always, this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.